everyone, it's Karen with Yes Please Paper Crafts and in this video I'm going to be going through some of my paper pads and kind of talking about whether or not I am going to store them as a paper pad, tear them down or use them in another way and so I just thought it would be uh, something fun to do today because uh, I just am kind of in a down mood and I wanted to play with some paper. <laughs> Okay, so let's go ahead and just jump right in and talk about this first one that I have here. I just got this one recently. My sister gave it to me for my birthday. And uh, so she got this at Michael's. It's a Craft Smart paper pad. And I didn't have this one, so I was really excited about getting paper for my birthday because paper is my favorite thing in the whole world. So <laughs> she gave me paper and she gave me washi tape. So I was really, really happy. <laughs> Okay, so um, in this one, this one's called the Floral Romance, and it has uh, kind of pinks and greens and gold accents. And I'll just give y'all a little peek at um, what this one has. I haven't opened it up yet, and talk a little bit about what my plans are for this one. So um, this particular paper ha pad has a lot of similar colors, and it's really, really pretty, and I love all of the gold accents in this paper pad and this is my favorite paper actually we should open this up <laughs> we should we can't do it justice if we can't see the whole page and um so one of the things that i just recently started doing was making base pages and a base page is something that i learned from janet over at rts scrapbooking and i will link uh her videos that she where she talked about base pages in the description below if you want to check that out it's something new to me I've never done before and I just started doing it probably uh, last uh, couple months I, I guess maybe I started in January I did take some paper with me uh, when I went to a friend's house for a craft night and I uh, just made some base pages and I, I think that it's really awesome if you're traveling somewhere to someone else's house to work on a project it's something that's really uh, easy to take with you because all you need is some paper glue maybe a tape gun your paper trimmer and uh you know maybe a few things like a couple of punches and some washi tape and you're good to go and you can just play with paper and so whenever i feel like playing with paper and being in my craft room i've been making these base pages and um just really find it relaxing you don't have to think about it too much now sometimes i do still struggle with it and i'll kind of try to pull some things together and it doesn't work out the way you know I want it to and that still happens sometimes but for the most part it's pretty simple to do base pages and uh, so I've been uh, doing that but the reason why I'm talking about that is for this particular paper pad I'm planning to pull it apart and use it to make base pages and I think that it's getting me to use my paper pads more and also um, some of the paper pads are really good to do base pages with because they have uh, papers that are very similar in color. Uh, you have cut aparts and there's all kinds of different, you know, types of papers in the paper pad and they all kind of go with each other. And I find also that paper pads have a lot more uh, plain pages, you know, like tone on tone patterns and, uh, you know, just simple patterns like checks and stripes and polka dots. And that makes it a really good to be able to use to do base pages. I find sometimes getting collection kits from different companies a lot of the paper there they have is so busy it you have to bring in other things and so i think with the paper pads it really does um have everything you need to make base pages and so oh let's go back and look at that page i've got the paper pad open and uh let me go over here to that paper this is my favorite paper in this whole paper pad isn't that gorgeous i just love this um paper with the border strips and i just think it's super pretty and so um, I picked this paper pad out to do base pages because I think that um, there's so many papers in here that would go together and I just love every, <laughs> all the paper in here is just gorgeous. It's just such a pretty paper pad. Now one of the other reasons why I thought well this would make a really good paper pad to do base pages is because there's also a lot of things here uh, that I could just kind of put with my other paper once I finish making all my base pa pages. If I have any papers left, like say this paper is left over, this would make a really great paper just to go through into my paper by color. And uh, 
you know, so there's a lot of uh, paper here that is just very plain, which I love. I think that's really awesome that they give you paper like this, but also paper that has more patterns on it. This would be really good to fussy cut. Wouldn't that be pretty to be able to cut out all these gold butterflies? That'd be gorgeous. And uh, so you also have a lot of cut aparts. Like there's this page here that's also a cut apart. And so I think this is going to be a good one to do that. Now, I think what I'll do is I've been wanting to do a video where I show how I make base pages. And so maybe what I'll do is I'll do that with this paper pad. So I'm not going to do that in this video for today. I just want to kind of go through some of these paper pads that I have and kind of talk a little bit about tearing the paper pad down or leaving it together. And I think a lot of people struggle with uh, kind of the, those two things. It's like, you know, how do you store that paper? And uh, do you tear all your paper pads down or do you leave them together? Um, I think it, to, for me, what I'm coming to realize is that it depends on the paper pad. It used to be, if you would have asked me that question a year ago, I probably would have said that I keep all my paper pads together and I don't tear any of them up. And I think I've kind of changed my mindset from last year just because I don't find that I'm using them as much as I probably could be. And also, I started doing the thing with the base pages. And then the third thing would be that I'm finding that a lot of the paper pads they don't really have paper that go together. And I'm going to show you a couple of examples of that. And I think that um, sometimes if you're looking for a particular type of paper and you're, you know, you have a paper pad that has a very strong theme, uh, those are the kinds of paper pads that I would leave together because they kind of, all the papers in there kind of go together. There's a theme to them. And if you were going to use that paper, maybe you would use it together. But then there's some paper pads where you look at it and you're like, wow, why did they put those particular papers together? And um, there was one in particular I was kind of surprised about because I used the paper pad and I started making base pages with it. And uh, I couldn't believe how many papers in that paper pad didn't go together. I was just like, wow, you know, these pa papers don't even have the same colors. The patterns are very different. It doesn't even have the same look and feel. And uh, I was kind of surprised um, by that particular paper pad. And uh, if I wouldn't have made that paper pad into base pages, I probably would have pulled the whole thing apart anyway. <laughs> okay, so this paper pad for sure is going to be uh, base pages. And then whatever's left over, I will probably just store with my other papers. And um, so let's see, uh, this paper pad is recent. So if you're looking for this one, it should still be available in Michael's. And I do believe, yes, it's a hot buy paper pad. And so just look for that where Michaels has their hot buy paper pads if you're looking for this particular one. Uh, but this paper pad is super pretty. So, Terry, thank you. <laughs> you did an awesome job with my present, I have to say. My family kind of gets worried. They're like, well, I don't know if I should buy you scrapbooking and paper and stuff because you got it all. And I'm like, yeah, but it doesn't matter. I just love it so much. So, yeah, I just uh, think that's awesome. So thank you. All right, so this next one is uh, from Sunny Days. This is a Maggie Holmes collection. And so I brought this one in just to kind of talk a little bit about collections. And uh, if you have other things in your craft room that may go with the paper. And so for this particular paper pad, uh, this one is, I don't think it's a collection. There's sometimes there's these, uh, what do they call them? Project pads. This is not the project pad, um, but it does have... Uh, some paper that's gold, gold foiled and so this particular paper here has gold foiling so really pretty so they have this cut apart and then if you've seen this Maggie I'm sure you've probably seen this collection before but this is the sunny days collection and I think this one came out last year and if I didn't have other things that went with this collection I might be tempted to pull this collection apart or this paper pad apart just because there's a lot of paper here, you know, like this, this paper with the fruit on it doesn't necessarily go with the paper here, which has the butterflies. And uh, so it's, it doesn't necessarily, I think, have to be used together as a collection. But because I have so many things uh, in my craft room that are from this Maggie Home Sunny Day collection, I'm going to keep it as a paper pad. And so it'll stay as a paper pad. And that way, if I go to use um, this uh, paper, 
I know exactly where uh, this stuff is in my craft room and I can go and pull all of Maggie Holmes sunny day stuff. I have like ephemera and um, you know just different things. I think I have washi tape and some other stuff. And so when you have something that's a collection and you have other things that go with it like ephemera, die cuts, puppy stickers, alphas, just you know, you have things stored other places in your craft room. I think the best approach to that would be to leave this as a paper pad. And so that's going to uh, stay as a paper pad. Okay, so let's talk about this next one. This one is from Pebbles. It's called Oh Summertime. And I got this one, I think it was in September last year. I went to a crop with my friends. And we went to Tuesday mornings. And I picked up this paper pad there, I believe. Yes, it came from Tuesday mornings, and uh, this one is uh, super cute. It's very colorful. It's kind of got a summer theme. It's called Oh Summertime, and uh, if you look through this one, I'm just going to flip through it, you'll see it's got things like, you know, stripes, there's lemons, there's this pink floral, there's a brighter pink with little polka dots that are kind of glittery, there's one with ice cream cones, this is a floral, there's a stripe, and... This one kind of looks like mermaids. <laughs> There's beach balls and polka dots and crawfish. Uh, I think that's crawfish. There's mermaids, <laughs> flip-flops. Uh, there's a, a check. So this paper is super cute. There's just cut apart. But if you look through this, it doesn't necessarily go together. Like, you know, if I was to use this paper on a layout, I probably wouldn't go for the beach balls, <laughs> you know, or the mermaids. And so this paper is very diverse in the theme that's in there. Even though it's summer, uh, it just has a lot of different types of paper. You know, there's ones with the kids in the pool. Uh, here's one with words on it. There's some more cut parts. And then it repeats. And so um, this paper pad right here. I was thinking about it, and I thought, well, you know, it is summertime, so I could just say, well, this is summertime. I'll put it with my paper and uh, kind of categorize it as a summer paper pad. But I think the problem with doing that is that now every time I go to look for a paper, if I'm not looking for something that is summer, I probably would never look at this paper pad because I would have it with my summer things. And so um, there's so many things in here that could be used for something other than summer. And I think that maybe a better approach to this particular paper pad would be to completely pull it apart. And for the papers like this one with the beach balls, <clears throat> or the papers like this flip-flops, uh, maybe this cut apart, and uh, the, the paper with the kids in the pool, I think those should go under summer. And then I would just uh, put the rest of the paper, like I, this would go with stripes, this paper might go with uh, my kitchen where I put my lemons and the other fruits. Uh, this one I might put under pink or maybe under florals. Uh, here's another one. This could go under pink or polka dots. And this one may be under food. And so the chances of me using maybe the ice cream cones would, would kind of be higher because if I had a layout where I had maybe a picture of somebody eating an ice cream cone, I might look under food. Uh, that category and uh, be able to find that paper much quicker than if I just had this in a paper pad that was labeled as summer. And so I think it's kind of important to think about how you would use the paper and how you would look for the paper. So those are the two things that I've been thinking about a lot as I think about how to organize my paper. I think, well, one, how would I use that paper? And then two, how would I look for it? How would I know where it is so that I can find it when I need it? Okay. So I hope this is making sense to you guys. I just uh, thought I get this question quite a bit, you know, where people, I see it all the time, uh, where people ask, do you pull your paper pads apart or do you keep them together? And I really think that that, uh, that needs to be a decision that you make based on how you want to use that paper and how you want to look for it. Okay, so this next one is from DCWV and it's called Fall Forest. It's also a paper pad I got at Tuesday mornings. I miss Tuesday mornings. I have 
hadn't been back there uh, in so long and I have a orthodontist appointment coming up and my orthodontist's office is really close to Tuesday mornings and I know that the stores have opened back up in my area and I uh, heard from some, several of my friends though that they went over to the Tuesday mornings and they haven't gotten any trucks in since this whole pandemic started which was back in, in the beginning of March and so my friends said they went and there wasn't a whole lot there but there should be getting trucks in soon so I'm hoping that if I go over to the Tuesday mornings next to my orthodontist office that maybe they'll have some new things there so maybe they'll have gotten a new truck that's what I'm hoping because I really miss my uh, visits to Tuesday mornings I just think it's so much fun it's like going on a treasure hunt you know you never know what you're gonna find and uh, it's super exciting to go in there and just kind of look around and see what they have okay so this one uh, is fall and let's kind of take a look at this one to see what kind of paper is in here so it's got a fall theme and I think that uh, this has a very distinct look and feel all of the papers in here have kind of almost a distressed look in the background of the patterns and uh, they all the colors go together it's very well coordinated as far as every page has similar colors and uh, I think that for this particular paper pad I am going to leave it as a paper pad for now and at some point I might uh, you know kind of take it apart but I think for now I'm going to leave it together it doesn't necessarily have a fall theme for every single paper in here but the papers do um, have a certain look and feel and I think that uh, I would probably use this paper with like if I was going to use this floral I would probably use other papers in this paper pad to kind of go with it uh, because it's a very distinctive look that it has and let me see if I can get this up closer to the camera so that you, you can kind of see what I'm talking about but you can kind of see how it has almost like a distressed look like almost like uh, it's washed out and it's really pretty it does have some gold foiling and it does have some pages that are a fall theme like this one but not everything in here is a fall themed paper and uh, I think that I would probably uh, keep this as a paper pad I would put it in my reference guide under autumn but maybe maybe also under florals <clears throat> so we're talking about reference guides let me just give you a look at the reference guide that I use when I'm storing my paper pads so that you can see uh, what I'm talking about there hold on one minute okay so I have uh, two different books here and I just broke it up into two different books because uh, it was just too much to fit on one set of these rings and these are the disbound rings and I just created this reference guide and I used an old happy planner uh, all of the you know old uh, calendars that were in there that had the divider tabs and I just cut it up and added a label uh, for each category and so the other thing that I do is I'll take a picture or I'll grab a picture off the internet for the paper pad. I'll print it out on some regular printer paper and uh, then I just have that as a representation of that paper pad. Okay, so the next thing that I do, let me grab another paper pad here. Okay, so I also will add a tab to each paper pad that has the name and the manufacturer. And then on the back of that, I write with the Sharpie this number. And that way, when I'm looking through my reference guide, I know exactly where to go to find that paper pad. Okay, so for instance, if I wanted to go and find this paper pad, then I can just look at the back here. And you can see uh, that if I wanted to go and grab this paper pad, which is the Bow Benny um, Butterfly Kisses, I'll show y'all how easy this is. I can turn it over here and I can see that this one is SC27, which means that it's in, <laughs> I couldn't remember what SC stood for. My storage keys, which are right behind me. And I'll see if I can insert a picture here of what my storage keys look like but I have a whole bunch of storage keys that I got from Michaels and Hobby Lobby 
and they're like the 14 by 14 cubes and I have all my paper pad stored there. So this is number 27, so I should just be able to um, turn around here and pull this paper pad out. See how quick that was? Isn't that awesome? I just love that. <laughs> so these are just stored in the cubes by numbers, one through however many I have. And you can see here, I was able to just go over to that and find number 27. And uh, here it is. And so um, I was able to find it that quickly. So I definitely love having my paper pad stored this way and using this reference guide in order to um, kind of have a way to reference them without having to pull each paper pad out of my uh, out of my storage cubes and look through it to try to figure out which paper pad I want to use. So I just recently uh, did something for someone for a graduation. My niece graduated from college. And I was able to just go over here to this one, which is by themes, and go to the one that has celebrations. And uh, can just go right here to the celebrations and find, find this uh, paper pad that I knew I had that was graduation themed. And just be able to see, hey, that's number 49. And I also have ephemera for that. And so um, really, really cool. Now, I haven't gone through and actually done this for every single one of these paper pads, but I was uh, thinking about, you know, possibly putting, like, I have the chipboard or I have, you know, whatever it is I want to use with that paper pad uh, and uh, just kind of putting that there so I kind of know that I have more for this paper pad or collection. And so um, that's kind of like how I use this. Now, I did have a video where I talked about how I created the tabs for the paper pads, and also how I created these uh, reference guides. So if you're interested in watching more about that, I will put a link in the description below to those videos. And uh, yeah, it just really works out really well. The thing that I also love about it is that I can store my paper pads, one the numbers one through you know 100 or whatever, and never have to move them. But if I want to reorganize or change the category that that paper pad is in, I can easily do that by just going here and saying, well, you know, this paper pad, maybe instead of it being under floral, I want it to be under spring. All I have to do is take this out and move it to spring. Or I could actually print another copy of this particular paper pad and put it under both floral and spring. And so that was the reason why I, I wanted to pull this out and kind of explain because I think what I'll do for this fall forest paper pad is create uh, two copies of the front cover, put one under fall and one under florals, because that way, if I'm looking for a floral, I might happen to see this and think, oh, hey, I could use that uh, for this layout. But if I'm looking for fall, I would find it as well. And so you don't just have to put it under one category. You could put it under multiple categories and uh, as many as you want, because this is just a way for you to find it. And, uh, it's a way for you to know where to look for it in your craft room. And so it's really cool because you can just flip through here and see all the different paper pads that you have available until you find the one you want and then you know exactly where to go to get it. Okay, I also wanted to mention that I saw uh, several people uh, doing something uh, else that I thought was really cool. So if you don't want to do this where you print out uh, a piece of paper like this and put it into a book. I've seen people do this where they take the front cover off, they just pull this whole cover and then they take all their covers and they mark a number on the cover and then they take it and put it through one of those uh, binding rings and just keep it on a ring. And Or you could put it in like a three, uh, like a three ring uh, binder or a scrapbook album or something and just keep it that way and you have this whole front page uh, to be able to see what paper you have. And I think that would work well, that would work really well too. I just, um, I kind of don't like to destroy things. <laughs> so to me, taking this off would hurt. <laughs> that doesn't work for me, but I know it works really well for a lot of people. And I, I would think it would be really cool to have this entire, you know, big, huge 12 by 12 representation of your paper pad. Now, if they gave me two and I could just pick one and still have the cover on there, I might do it, but I don't like the idea of taking the cover off and then not having that on the paper pad. <laughs> so, but
but it's an option if you instead of doing it this way, way where you create these little reference guide uh, you could just use the front covers of all your uh, paper pads and do that um, and then this particular one I actually created it's it's like a five by five you can create it any size you want I just happen to like this particular size because I like small things like this it's big enough that i can see all the papers on there and it's a, a good visual representation without being too big and bulky and so um, i just like this particular size i can also get two of these printouts on each eight and a half by 11 sheet of printer paper okay so this one will go keep by a uh, paper pad i'm going to keep it together and it's going to be categorized by fall and floral Okay, up next is another paper pad by DCWV. This one also came from Tuesday Mornings, and it's called Confetti Party. Now, this one, I haven't even opened it up, um, and uh, I guess I could do that. These are all paper pads that I've gotten, and I haven't put them into my storage yet. I need to put tabs on them and also print out the uh, covers to put into my reference guide. And that's kind of why I picked these particular ones to kind of talk about uh, because I was trying to decide do I want to make the tabs and and put them into the reference guide or do I want to pull them apart and store them with my other paper or do I want to make these pages with them so um, I thought about you know making this video and kind of going through my thought process of how I am going to decide what to do with each one of these paper pads and not uh, you know waste my time making a tab and you know printing out something from a reference guide if I'm not going to store it as a paper pad okay so for this one uh, let's go ahead and just kind of look at this one this one is a confetti party it's party based uh, like congratulations it's not birthday I don't think it's just party like a if you're, you had a layout for a birthday party or an anniversary or anything where you're celebrating, uh, this paper pad uh, would be a good one. So it's got some polka dots and then some other like geometrics and some donut sprinkles. And then there's this one with the little words. So uh, lots of confetti looking pages. There's hearts and here's one that says... Um, <clears throat> Throw kindness around like confetti. That's cute. I had, it took me a while to figure out because it was going sideways. So this one is uh, really fun. It has a lot of confetti type pages. Lots of things that you would use, you know, maybe to do things for celebrations. You could make birthday cards with this. and uh, Or like uh, any kind of like a congratulations card. And as I look through here, I mean, I could break this apart. I could put some of it with uh, things like uh, polka dots or, you know, like, you know, rainbow or geometrics. I have all these different categories I've been putting things under just by color, just like purple. But uh, I think that looking through this paper pad, all of the paper in here is very similar in color. And it's got a very distinct color theme. It's got this pink, the light green, and um, a darker pink, the black, and when you look at these different pages, and I think about how I would use this paper, I would probably want to use it if I was making a birthday card, or creating a layout for some kind of a celebration, like a graduation, somebody's retirement party, or something like that, and so I think what I will do is keep this together as a paper pad, and if at some point in the future I've used a lot of this up and I only have, you know, part of it left, maybe then I might break it apart and uh, put it somewhere else in my craft room. But for now, I think if I was going to use this paper pad and I was looking for it, I would probably look under uh, celebration or, yeah, celebrations in this uh, themed um, book. So I would probably look under the category celebrations. And so I'll probably keep this as a paper pad and put it here under this category and um, just do it that way. So I think that's what I'm going to do. <clears throat> so I think if you're looking at a paper pad and you think that uh, you would look for it a certain way, I think that you have to think about that when you think about how you're going to store that. 
Okay, so this next one is one that I purchased from Michaels. And this is not a hot buy paper pad. Uh, this is one that I actually found there. Was it the hot buy paper pad? I don't think it was. I just liked it. I thought this is so cool because it has all these different pink chips and different colors. And it's, I love doing things that are rainbow. And uh, it's, I love doing things that have like little squares. And look at that, how cool. So it has all this different gradi gradation, or gradation, how do you say that? Gradation? <laughs> that word? I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but it's, uh, you know, the different shades of this pink. And so it has all different colors. And I just think this is uh, really cool. It's really pretty. And so I could see using this to do uh, layouts by color. Now, I don't know if, um, I don't know how I would look for this. And this is one that's kind of like been bugging me because I don't really know, you know, how I would use this or where I would store it. And if I should use it, if I should leave it as a paper pad or maybe put it by color. And I'm almost wondering maybe if I shouldn't break it up by color because it's very distinct in that it has the different colors of the rainbow. And I'm pretty sure that it's all separate. Yeah, so you have blue, there's green, there's yellow. But then if I've separated it by color and I wanted to do something where I use like the little squares, but I wanted like orange and yellow and pink, I would have to go through my uh, color bin and find all of these papers in the individual colors, which might be a challenge. Hmm. Okay. Um, and then I'm looking at these. These are like much bigger uh, pieces of uh, paper. And that almost would be something that I would use as a scrap. Like if I'm looking for something to maybe mat a picture or to create a border strip, I might use that paper. So um, I don't know. What would y'all do with this paper pad? If you have an idea for how you would store this paper pad and what you would use it for, maybe leave a comment below in this video and just let me know because that I'd be interested in hearing what other paper people would do with this particular paper pad. It's a very interesting paper pad. I think it's really cool. I'm just not sure how to store it. And you know what? I think at this point, I'm not going to pull this apart. So if you have any type of question in your mind that if you, you know, where you're not sure how you would use a paper pad, it might be better just to let it alone and just leave it as a paper pad for a while until you maybe think about how you would use that. <laughs> So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave this as a uh, paper pad and I'll probably, I'm not exactly sure where I would put it in my, um, in my catalog here, my reference guide, but I do have, you know, several different categories. You know, I don't have a category called rainbow. I do have a category called rainbow that I have for my individual 12 by 12 papers. And in, those, in that category, I have paper that has all the colors of the rainbow. And so I think that, uh, you know, like if you have a rainbow striped paper or paper that has polka dots in every color, that's the kind of paper that I put in the rainbow category. And I'm thinking maybe I should add a category called rainbow. So if I have a paper pad that has just colors like this, it's like rainbow colors. I would probably look for it if I had a category called rainbow. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'll create that in my reference book. At least for now. You know, nothing is ever uh, set in stone. It's, you know, if you make a decision and uh, the next day you decide something else, well, I'll just change it. <laughs> no, the paper police is not going to come and tell you just because you chose to put something into a category that it has to stay there. <laughs> so, okay. All right, this next one is called Rainbow Inks. It's also from Craft Smart, and it is a hot buy paper pad that came from Michaels. And this paper pad is super cool. And uh, let me see, I haven't opened this one up either. I think I got this one earlier this year before the whole pandemic stuff started, maybe in January or February. And so it might still be available at Michaels if you're looking for this one. It may still be there, um, but I couldn't pass this one up when I saw it. I just, 
I just love watercolor looking things and this one just has the most gorgeous looking paper that looks like watercolor and so isn't that pretty it's just gorgeous and so I could see using a lot of this for backgrounds and I thought about maybe taking it apart and putting it under my I could put this under cut apart I could put these under backgrounds um, this could go under cut aparts as well. I have a cut aparts category called borders, and that could go under there. And so I could possibly pull this entire one apart. And uh, I think maybe that's what I'm going to do. Because as I look through here and I think about how I would use all of this different paper, I'm thinking background, 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 <laughs> background, and then cut apart. And so basically this entire paper pad is background, background, cut apart, border strips. And so I think that I am going to actually take this apart and store it under that category. And uh, I have under backgrounds other categories like I have uh, wood grains, uh, textures, and things like that. And so I, I'm not sure if I have a category called watercolor, but I might just put one called watercolor because that way I would have... Um, probably know to go to look for that if I was going to create a layout where I wanted kind of a watercolor looking background I would know hey I want to go to backgrounds and under backgrounds I have watercolor or paper that looks like a watercolor background I would go immediately to there I could pull that paper out and look through it and find something that might work for my layout so that's kind of like my thought process on how should I store paper in my craft room I think it's more about not really storing it it's more about how do you look for it <laughs> and what are you going to use it for <laughs> okay this next one is from jen hadfield and it's called chasing adventures this one is another one from tuesday mornings and i got this one i think it was last year and i think i've seen this in there fairly recently uh, but this is really cute i love jen hadfield love the colors I don't really have anything from this particular collection. It's not one of the ones that was really in my Tuesday mornings as far as having the ephemera, this 3D stickers and other things that go with this particular Chasing Adventures. And I do have a number of different Jen Had Hadfield collection or paper pads where I have die cuts and uh, washi tape and all kinds of stuff. And so those I'm keeping as paper pads because I want to be able to be able to find that paper pad that goes with the, those different embellishments. But for this one, I don't really have anything to go with it. The other thing that's kind of interesting about this particular paper pad is it is travel themed. And you can see here that, you know, they have this particular layout as an example that has the word road trip. So it's travel themed. But let's kind of take a look at what's in here and you'll see that not everything in here is travel themed. Okay, so we have this page here, which is kind of travel themed. It's really cool. It has these little circles. It's gold foil. And uh, each one of the little circles has a scene. Like this is an airplane taking off. There's a cruise ship. There's a log cabin. So really, really super cool. And I would say this is definitely travel. And we have this one, not travel. <laughs> it's a floral. Okay, we have a paper that's kind of a tone on tone pattern. Then there's this one here, which is a blue tone on tone, looks like waves. We have this light blue floral with this gold floral, or light blue paper with a gold floral. Okay, then we have a cut apart. This is definitely travel. It has uh, travel, you know, sayings, never stop exploring, adventure is out there. So this one is definitely a travel theme paper. Okay, then we have another floral. There's a plaid. <laughs> There's this blue paper with a gold foiling. So it's very pretty. This is polka dot. There's a rainbow stripe. Here's another floral, <laughs> a gold diagonal stripe. And here's one that kind of could be travel. It could also be sightseeing. Um, you know, it's not necessarily travel, although some of the people have little suitcases, um, but some people are on bicycles. I guess it is travel because there's somebody with a map. There's this one with the airplanes, and there's one with words. There's another one with gold words, a map. And then there's these border strips, some of which are travel, some of which you could use for things other than travel. And then this paper that looks like water. 
There's this one that has these little gold um, leaves, palm leaves. There's pineapples, another cut apart. I don't know if it's, yeah, here it's going to start repeating. This one's definitely travel. There's this floral that looks really tropical and then it repeats. Okay, my thought for this one is that if you were to individually take these papers and look at them, they don't go together. <laughs> they just don't. That does not go with that. Um, and it can't go together, but not necessarily. I don't really think that that goes together. Although maybe these two might. You could potentially use those two together. It'd be pretty. Um, but not all the papers here really go together. And so if I was looking for this paper, I don't know that even if I had this paper in my, um, in my reference guide and I put it under travel and I also put it under brights because I do have some of my paper pads by color because sometimes you just don't have a paper pad that has any kind of theme at all. And so I ended up doing something where I have rainbow categories. And so under rainbow, I have like every day, which is kind of like medium tone colors that are just regular colors. I have pastels, which are more muted pastel colors. I have brights, which I would probably put this under bright. The things that have much brighter colors. And uh, so I could do that. I have, also have darks, which is things that have blacks and navies and dark greens. And uh, so I could potentially leave it as a paper pad and put it under travel and under brights. But the problem with that is that there's paper in here that doesn't even belong in either one of those categories. And that, for example, this paper just looks like an oddball on this, on this particular paper pad. I don't really even know why that particular pattern was chosen for this paper pad because to me, it's very, the floral is very delicate looking. It's not summery at all. It's not travel. It, the color is a very pale blue-gray color. And it just doesn't seem like it goes with anything else in this paper pad. <laughs> um, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this paper pad apart. And anything that's travel themed, I will put with my travel paper. I have a category called travel. Anything that is uh, not travel themed, I'm just going to look at that paper and then just decide, you know, where to put it and what kind of a category to put it in. And so, you know, for example, I might put this under polka dot or maybe under green. This one for sure would go under rainbow for rainbow stripes. I would put this one under floral. This would go under stripes. So, you know, I could really easily break this up in a way that would make it much more likely that I would use this paper uh, for a layout than keeping it together as a paper pad. And so I would suggest that if you have this paper pad and you have a lot of ephemera and uh, embellishments and things that go with it, maybe you might want to keep this as a paper pad and keep it together. But um, I think that sometimes if you just have the paper pad and that's all you have, you really just need to look at it as, would I use this together? Does it make sense to keep it together? Um, would I look for this paper and use this paper um, you know, by keeping it as a paper pad. And I don't think that I would. I think I would get more use from this paper by breaking it up and putting it in with my other paper. So putting this with the plaids. If I'm looking for a plaid, maybe I might find that paper and use it. Okay, so there's that one. All right, so the next one I have here is from DCWB. This is the Linen Closet. This one came from Joann's. Yes, I did pick this one up at Joann's when Joann's had a sale. And uh, this one, I just bought it because I love the colors. My favorite color in the whole world is uh, anything that's blue-green. So teal, aqua, green-blue, blue-green, anything in that kind of color family. I love those colors. And this paper is just really, really pretty. And I got this. Oh, it opens this way. I was going to say, I know that I've, I've actually looked through this before and I've used a couple pieces in here. But this one has also some textured paper. And so it's got white. It's got it's lots of solids. So then I was keeping a lot of my paper that was cardstock like this in paper pads. 
because I had quite a bit of the paper pads from Michaels that were by, it was uh, cardstock from the Hot Buy paper pads. So I had quite a bit of that. And I found that when I was going through and trying to find uh, paper and I wanted the cardstock, I was just looking at the cardstock that I keep in my rolling storage that's underneath my table. I have that paper sorted by color and whenever I would go and look for uh, like a pink paper, I would look under there and that's the only place I would look. I wouldn't go back and look at the paper that I was storing by paper pad. Um, you know, it was just easier just to find, you know, the paper that I had that was stored by color underneath my table. And so I recently, over the past couple months, took all of those paper pads, tore them apart, and sorted them by color and put them in uh, those uh, rolling storage that I have. Now, I didn't have enough space because I, you know, once I took all the paper pads, I had quite a big stack of uh, paper pads that were just cardstock. I ended up not having enough space to fit it into one of those rolling storage bins that I have with the hanging file folders. And so I decided to create another flip bin and I put all my paper by color in the flip bin on top of one of my tables. And then I moved all of the cardstock that I have into those two rolling uh, storage cubes that I have. So I have uh, videos on my flip bin storage and also the mobile rolling storage. So I'll put links in those to those videos in the description below if you're interested in, in looking to see how I store my paper by color. And uh, yeah, I have, I have those videos on that. But as I'm looking through this paper pad, I think that I would use it more if it was stored with my other cardstock by color. I also have this glitter paper, which I have stored in another place in my craft room. And so I'll probably put the glitter paper uh, with the other glitter paper that I have. Sorry, I just got a phone call. Okay, so um, I'm going to probably tear this paper pad apart because it's all cardstock. And I will store it with my other cardstock by color. So I would say if you have paper pads like this that has uh, cardstock and then you're not using it and you're not reaching for it when you go to look for cardstock, then maybe you might think about, um, you know, kind of tearing that paper pad down and putting this cardstock with your other cardstock. And that's kind of what where I am right now in my craft room. I want all my cardstock together because not only does it put it all in one place, it also uh, allows me to have more choices so that when I'm looking for a particular, you know, color of cardstock, I have everything there, like all of the teals are all in that one place. And so I just have to look in that one place and uh, nowhere else. So I think that that's probably a better way to do it. And I'll probably use it more than having this stored on my, in my storage cubes uh, way across the room. So. And right now I actually am sitting on the other side of where I usually sit to do my scrapbooking because I've been doing an, a lot of online crops. And if I sit in the place where I usually do when I'm doing scrapbooking, I have several windows behind me. And so it creates a problem because then people can't see me. So <laughs> right now I have everything to where it's going the other way. Um, but Usually my paper pads are on the opposite side of the room from where I am and uh, but right now they're right behind me from where I'm sitting right now. Okay, so the next one here is kind of a different type of paper pad. This was another one that I picked up at Joann's just recently and uh, this was one of my online purchases. This one's open because I've looked through it. Um, I have a paper pad from Joann's. It's also from, oh wait, this is not from Joann's. I'm getting confused. I have another paper pad from Joann's. I'll have to see if I can get that. Let me hold on just one second. <clears throat> okay, so this is the one from Joann's. And uh, this one is uh, all tags. And I thought this was really cool. And I have it stored uh, in, my, in a place where I know where it is but I never reached for it. And I'm just like trying to figure out what would be a better way of storing this. I'm not really sure if I want to like punch all these out. These are actually like punch outs. You can punch out these dies. Now, not everything in this particular paper pad is like that. There's some where the paper is solid, but you can cut it apart. So these are all cut aparts. They're all tags. 
and um, I don't know I don't usually look at it very often and I don't know how how to actually you know kind of like you know remember to go and actually look through this and uh, so anyway I have this one which is a tag stack this one is die cut shapes I have used quite a few pages from this one actually and uh, so this is really cool it's all die cut pieces as well and you can punch it out and uh, use those so I have that one this was also from Joann's and it's DCWV and at one point they didn't have this anymore and I just recently picked one of these up from my mom for Mother's Day and uh, so they have this one again which is the die cut shapes and it's really cool because you know the paper pads you get a lot in here there's also gold fulling and so if you're looking for some inexpensive um, ephemera you can get pages and pages and pages of stuff to embellish your layouts and uh, all different things and it goes with other paper pads if you look at it you'll realize that some of this uh, actually goes with other paper pads that are sold by DCWV. So it's almost like they took all of their different collections of paper pads. Same thing here. Um, this came from a lot of different uh, paper pads that they sell and they just took all the tags and cut aparts out of it and sold it separately. Cause I know for sure I have the paper pad. I have this exact same paper pad, but super cool that they do that. And if you're looking for a way to get a lot of embellishments if you're just getting started with scrapbooking. These paper pads from DCWV that are tag stacked and then also the die cut shapes and then there's a third one which is called journaling which has and then this one I actually picked up it's DCWV but I picked it up from Tuesday mornings and this one has uh, all different kinds of things that you can use for journaling. So super cool but Sometimes I just don't reach for some of this. And if you notice, this one actually has paper in the front of it. So um, if I was looking for this paper, I don't think I would think to look in this journaling paper pad. So I need to probably try to see if I can figure out what exactly to do with these if I just leave them as paper pads. And what I did for now is I have these. So I have these paper pads actually stored in a totally Tiffany cart that's really close to my workspace. And I thought if I put them there, then maybe I would uh, reach for them more and I haven't. So I need to try to figure out um, a better way uh, to uh, store these or to think about them so that I would actually use them more. Because one of the other things really interesting about it, if you look at it, there's all different styles in here and different color schemes so say this one's black and white you know there's gold there's you know pastel rainbow colors and then there's florals there's these really, really bright colors and so maybe i might think about breaking these up and storing them with my other die cuts uh, by the type of die cut it is because then maybe i would use it more so i need to think about that a little bit more for now, I'm just going to leave them as paper pads and store them all in the same place together because I kind of know where they are. And so I'm just going to leave them there. Okay, so this one actually came from Michael's. This is Recollections. And uh, I don't think this was a hot buy paper pad. Okay, sorry, my dog was barking at the garbage truck. <laughs> so I, I completely forgot what I was actually talking about. But um Okay, so she has stopped barking, and uh, this one is one that came from Michael's. It's a Recollections paper pad. It's not a hot buy paper pad, but I did get this recently. I believe it was earlier this year, maybe January, February. I got it at the same time that I got that other one that was, uh, I can't remember which one it was, but I did buy a couple of paper pads there uh, not too long ago. I think it was the rainbow one with the watercolor backgrounds. I got that kind of the same time, around the same time. So, um, I think I had, oh, I know what it was. I had gift cards. That's what it was. And so I did go into Michael's and that, of course I had to buy more paper. <laughs> like I needed more paper, but it, I could go into any store. If they have paper, that's the first place I'll go and look. <laughs> they could sell a lot of other things, but I always want to look at the paper. <laughs> okay. So this one is really cool. It reminded me of the one that I got from DCWV from Joann's and, uh, if you look through this one, I just fell in love with this because I love this paper where it has a little bitty squares. And even though this says it's a tag pad, it's got other stuff in it. And it's got this really cute check pattern on the back or plaid pattern on the back. 
And so it's got these little bitty squares and then there's a bunch of cut aparts. And I just thought this was too cute. And I love the colors in it. And so I just think it's really pretty. Now, one of the things I thought was interesting about this paper pad is it's not, it's not cut through, so you could use the back of it. So what they did is they actually have the front of the paper pad with the cut apart, and then you still have the back page that you can use. So it's coordinating paper, which I think is really awesome. And I love the colors. It's very soft looking. And uh, I think all of the colors really go well together. So this paper pad is going to give you a lot of embellishments because it's just tons and tons. Now they do have some of the paper here, it looks like, that is already cut for you. But a lot of it, you still have the whole sheets of paper that you can use. Okay, so when we get to this part right here, uh, this particular paper is already uh, cut apart. And you just punch it out. And then we have some more paper here that is whole paper. I just love the colors. It's really, really pretty. And they do have duplicates. So the other thing that's really nice about this paper pad is that, you know, you may not want two of these papers, but you have the, the back side. And so you could use uh, the back side instead of having two of the cut aparts. So it's really nice that they gave two of each one. And uh, there is some, though, that are that you punch out. And this is really cool. These are all uh, ones that at the bottom here that are tags and uh, they have some more. These are circles and these you can also punch out which I think is cool because it's really hard to cut apart a circle um, to make it look right. And usually when I'm doing circles I use a punch because I can never uh, fussy cut out the circle and make it look right. So these are all cut for you and you can just punch them out. And then there, there's these tags. And so this really gives you a lot of embellishments. And I just think that the designs of this paper pad is really pretty. And it also has some gold foiling. I just love this page. That's really, really cute. And uh, all the gold foiling is just really pretty. And there are two of each one of these pages. So what would I do with this paper pad? Um... I don't know. I think I'm still going to probably keep it with the other ones that I have like this. And uh, I have them actually stored in my reference guide. I think I have a special section called specialty. And under the specialty, there's things like I have here. This is like crepe paper. Uh, there's washi paper. I have cork. I think that's where I put it. Let's see. Nope, this is just all different types of paper. Where did I put it? I put it under other. Did I put it? Under? Yeah, I put it under other. Okay, <clears throat> so I have a category in my reference guide called other. And I have things like, this is a lazy scrapbooker paper pad. Um, I have uh, all of these paper pads I just showed you, like the die cut shapes, the journaling, the tag stack. And I will just go ahead and add this paper pad uh, to my uh, my reference guide and store it on my Totally Tiffany um, paper rack with the other um, paper pads. So I've got one more thing to share with you, and that is if you were wondering what a base page is or what it looks like, I will go ahead and show you a couple ones that I made. So let's see what I did with that. Okay, so I got uh, this Park Lane paper pad from Joann's. It's called Prairie Primrose. It looks really pretty. I bought it online, so I didn't get to see it in person before I purchased it. And so I was uh, in an online virtual crop. I wanted something to do, so I just grabbed this paper pad and I thought, well, I'm going to make some base pages because I've used these Park Lane paper pads um, before to make base pages. And usually they're very easy to use, you know, all the colors go together. And I thought, well, I'll just use this paper pad and pull it apart and just, you know, kind of play with it. Because it's just fun to play with uh, papers. And these paper pads from Park Lane, this is a collection pad. You'll see here, sometimes it's called a specialty pad, some calls it, sometimes it's called a collection pad. It includes foil, embossed paper, linen, vellum, and texture pages. And so um, you get a lot to work with there. There's also cardstock. So these papers from, or these paper pads from Park Lane are really awesome for creating base pages because 
you have a lot to work with. Now, one of the things that I found with this particular paper pad when I started going through it is the paper doesn't go together. <laughs> Not all of the paper goes together. Some of it goes together. But I was kind of struggling with it. And I want to show y'all two base pages that I made from this paper pad. So this is one. It looks like this. And this is one of my favorite pages that I've ever made. I just think, I love the colors. I use this with black and white washi tape. I have a mat for two uh, four by six pictures. And um, so I just love the colors in this. But can you believe that this paper is the same from the same paper pad? So I actually uh, did this base page as well. And I used these little cut aparts down here and a punch and I created a border. I don't really like this one as well. I'm hoping that once I find pictures to go with it and I you know do a whole page that I like it better, but out of the two pages, I like this one much better. Can, but can you tell, if I showed you these two pages, would you be able to tell this came from the same paper pad? <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's really interesting to me that this Park Lane paper pad was so different. The papers in it uh, were just very, very different. And um, they don't, when you start to try to pull them together, I'm just gonna kinda do this so you can see. Uh, some of the different colors here because you have you have this pink paper with kind of a mauve flower and dark green and then you've got this bright bright red and then you've also got a burgundy it just is kind of a strange color combination there's a dark kind of a yellow green but there's also this kind of blue green and um, you know you have black in here but even the black didn't go together like I was trying to take um, something and kind of put it together in the there's different tones of black so the pages the paper in here doesn't really um blend well together i think like these two papers they don't they don't look like they belong together so i think that uh before i do another one like this where i pull a paper pad apart to do base pages i'm going to really look at the paper pad and make sure that it would make good base pages because this particular one had i looked through this and really thought about it before i started pulling it apart and working with it i probably would have just ripped this whole paper pad apart tore it up and separated it all um, just based on like by category or by color or something else because if i was working with the paper in this paper pad i probably wouldn't use it together <laughs> so if you have a paper pad where you're looking at it and you're thinking you know, there's pages in here that I would never use together. That might be a good candidate for tearing that paper pad apart because you probably would use it more if you had it with other paper. So for all of this paper that I have left over from my attempt at, at doing base pages, I'm probably going to just put the scraps with my other scrap paper and then um, the whole sheets of paper that I have, it'll just get broken up and recategorized into other things and, and stored with other paper in my craft room. So I love these Park Flame paper pads. And uh, I think out of all the paper pads that they have out there, they're some of the best I've ever seen because the colors are very rich. The types of paper that you get are very nice because there's usually foiling or vellum or uh, some kind of a fabric or textured pages. They're usually double-sided. You get cardstock and the cardstock is very heavy cardstock. I mean, it's not super thick, but it's a really nice textured cardstock. So I think for the value and the money, these Park Lane paper pads are amazing. And for the most part, I've gotten these Park Lane paper pads and uh, they're really uh, coordinated. They go together and you could really use them to make some really pretty base pages. And they would be really awesome if you were making an album and you wanted all your pages to coordinate. Uh, you could definitely use the paper pads for that, but just be, um, you know, kind of careful with which ones you purchase because this particular one, um, I didn't realize it when I got it was, you know, it's really not the type of paper pad that you could use that whole paper pad and kind of have a, an album that would be cohesive and look like it went together. So I'm gonna show you another Park Lane paper pad. This one, I completely ripped it apart. And for this one, I do think that all the papers here were very well coordinated. The colors went really well together. 
and I had a much easier time kind of working with this paper pad. And uh, this one is the Bloom de Fleur. It's really pretty. It's got pinks and burgundies and golds and creams and green, two different color greens. And here's the base page I made with this paper pad. And I used a border. Uh, this was a border that I created with the Creative Memories uh, border maker system. It's called the Crystal Chain, I think. And uh, just really, really pretty paper in that paper pad. And so here's another one that I created with the paper in that paper pad. So all of the paper there, I can just uh, go through the rest of the paper there and make more base pages. And then if I have anything left over after I make the base pages, I will just put it with my other scraps. Or if I have full pages left, I will just put it with either paper by color or by uh, some other category. So I hope that kind of helps you guys uh, to try to, you know, think about, you know, how you store your paper pads and whether or not you would like to tear them up or uh, store them as a paper pad. And uh, that was a lot of fun. I just love playing with paper, talking about paper, and hanging out with you guys. <laughs> if you uh, like this video and you thought it was something you'd like to see something like this again, please leave me a comment or just give me a thumbs up. And uh, if you've not subscribed but you want to see more videos, please subscribe to my channel. I would really love that. And uh, so that's all I have for today. So y'all take care and hope you have an awesome week. And I will see you next time. Bye now. Hello. Is there somebody there? <laughs> what you doing in there, little girl? Are you under that blanket? <laughs> Where are you? Lily Bell, what you doing under there? You gonna come out? <laughs> Boop! Lily Bell, what you doing? <laughs> was you hiding? Or was you snuggling? Are you my snuggle buddy? <laughs> You're so funny. <laughs> what you doing under there, huh? <laughs> Did I disturb you? Oh, I'm so sorry. I just had to take this opportunity to get this on on a video because you do that all the time and you're so cute. I know, you're just adorable when you snuggle. <laughs> okay, so I want to get up because I want to go get another cup of coffee. Is that okay? No. <laughs> She wants to go back and sleep under there. So this is the blanket that's hanging off my chair. <laughs> I didn't know she was under there until I went to get up. And I didn't even see her. <laughs> I could have stepped on you. <laughs> you were really under that blanket, weren't you? Huh. Yeah. You was under there sleeping. <laughs> You got nothing to say? Nope. Okay. Well, I'll let you get back to your nap then. <laughs>